Wood dust is a big problem. There have been a bunch of medical studies that have looked at the effects that long-term wood dust exposure has on us as woodworkers, and the problems can be big time. They can range all the way from things as simple as chronic sinus problems, all the way up to allergies, and even possibly the development of COPD, also known as emphysema. That risk only goes up if you are in the trades and are being exposed to other things that are known to be irritants to your lungs. And as a former full-time ER doctor, I can tell you, you don't want COPD in your life. Those of us who have been in woodworking for a while have also heard stories of people who develop such severe allergies that they have to quit the hobby altogether. So about a year ago, I decided to invest in my own health and my own garage workshop and upgrade my dust collection system to this Oneida V3000 dust collector. And in this video, we are going to do a thorough review of this dust collector. We'll answer some of your questions about dust collection. And in the end, hopefully convince you to make dust collection and your health a little bit more of a priority in your shop. So when I first started turning my garage into a wood shop back in the 2016, 2017 timeframe, my dust collection was non-existent. I had a shop vac, some 2.5 inch hose, and I tried to connect it to things like my miter saw and my WEN contractor table saw. Now there are lots of videos out there about people making very cheap dust collection systems with nothing but a shop vac and 2.5 inch hose. I tried all that and my dust collection was non-existent. My contractor saw would frequently clog up and my benchtop joiner, my benchtop planer, don't even try. Those things clogged up right away. As I was having problems with that, I decided to upgrade to one of the Rockler systems. Now the system that I ultimately wound up using was Rockler's 650 CFM system. I added a canister filter with a little bag on it, and I even made it a two-stage dust collector by adding a theme baffle type device to the top of a plastic trash can. Now that system was doing pretty well, but then these two machines showed up. I got this big Grizzly G1021X2, 15 inch helical head planer, and I got this eight inch joiner. Now for a while, I tried to use both of these machines with my previous setup. Again, the two stage setup where I had the plastic trash can with the theme baffle trying to act as a pre dust collector separator, and then the dust right 650 CFM separator. Now, while that thing advertises itself at 650 CFM and this planer requires between 500 and 600 CFM at the tool, I can tell you I was not getting 650 CFM. And there's a bunch of different reasons for that. The first reason was obviously the trash can separator. That is just quite simply not set up to be a closed system. There's air leakage everywhere. So I lost CFM there. The other problem is where I had to put that dust collector was in a corner and it had an immediate strict 90 degree elbow coming out of the initial inlet. And anybody who knows anything about dust collection knows that is a big no-no. I lost a bunch of CFM there. Now, no matter what I tried with that system, I could not get it to work with these two tools. At the planer, I would have chips constantly shooting out of the front. And even if I had just milled three to four boards, by the end of it, there would be a huge pile of chips collected on the floor. Same thing goes with the joiner. Now, joiners are notoriously difficult tools to get great dust collection on, but I would just wind up with a pile of chips everywhere. And the other thing that I always noticed was that my shop was constantly covered in this thin layer of fine dust. Now, as I mentioned before, I was previously a full-time ER doctor, and quite honestly, taking care of people who have end-stage lung disease is something that if you see it, it definitely doesn't leave you and kind of leaves a mark. And I didn't want to wind up like that. And looking at this fine coat of dust, these piles of chips everywhere, I decided I need to do something. So I shopped around, I looked at all the different brands, and I wound up choosing this Oneida V3000 dust collector. Now, I bought all of this with my own money. Oneida has not paid me anything to make this review nor did they ask me to do this review. This is something I just wanna share with you guys. Now, why did I ultimately land on Oneida? Well, there were a couple reasons. Number one, this system in particular looked like the system that I wanted to get. But number two, Oneida is made in the USA, the customer service is in the USA, and all of my initial interactions with them talking about the product, them recommending which one I should get, talking to me about my shop setup, led me to believe 
and ultimately it proved true that they had fantastic customer service and it would be a great company to invest this kind of money in. Now, if you're at all curious about what dust collector to get, one thing that I can't advocate enough is that you should call some of these companies. And part of my research process was not just looking at everything on the web, but calling the different companies. And I actually called Oneida and they started talking to me about my shop. They asked questions like, tell us about your tools. How many tools do you run at once? How many people are working in your shop at the same time? Tell me about the number of tools in your shop that have 2.5 inch dust ports that you want to hook up versus the number of tools with four inch, five inch or greater dust ports. They specifically asked about the big drum sander and they asked about all this stuff because that was going to make sure that I was going to get the best dust collector that was suited to my needs. I didn't need anything portable. I wasn't worried necessarily about size because I had a great space for something to be stationary. And with the tools that I have, this is the system they recommended. And that jived with what I had done in terms of research. So let's talk first about the unit itself and why I went with this versus some of the other units that are out there. Now, the way my shop was set up, I've got this corner, the door coming from my house is right here. And this corner didn't really get used for much. So this was a perfect space where I knew that this was going to fit. I had two options when I went to choose this in terms of the Oneida V systems. They have a 1500 and they have a 3000. The 1500 runs off of 120 volt the 3000 runs off of 220. And since I had done an electric upgrade in my shop, I had the ability to run a circuit specifically for this dust collector. And that is something very important when you consider your dust collection is what kind of electricity do you have? How many tools do you have? How many tools do you have running at once? How many people are working in your shop? And all that kind of stuff plays into what sort of dust collector that you can get and that you should get. So after doing a lot of the research online between different dust collectors and different ones that Oneida made specifically, I elected to go for the V system. And let's run through some of the specifications and talk about why I chose this system in particular. The V system V3000 that I have here again, like I mentioned, runs off of 220 and it comes with a three horsepower motor. Now that motor can provide enough CFM all at one time for up to two tools that are running simultaneously provided those tools have four to six inch dust ports on them, anything bigger, and it's not gonna be able to handle the two tools at once. So this was a big factor for me because I have a couple things that sort of need that ability to run two tools at once. And one of them is this drum sander. This is a big 26 inch dust sander, and a lot of people will put some sort of contraption on the top of these that runs both of the dust collection ports out to one single port. In fact, this one, when I bought it, the people who sold it to me had done the same thing. Um, the problem with that is most people, when they make this again, you get a sharp 90 and it just doesn't provide enough CFM to really collect all the fine dust. And the drum sander is a huge producer of fine dust. Now, big chips, like things that come flying out of the planer, I can't inhale those, but fine dust that's in the air, I absolutely can. So making sure that I had good dust collection for the drum sander, which requires that dual port to really run at its maximum efficiency was a huge priority for me. The other thing that was a big factor is my CNC. Now I don't have a huge CNC. It's a Shapoko XL, but that is often running at the same time that I'm running other tools. That's the whole reason I bought it was to give myself a little bit of multitasking ability. Now I opted for the 55 gallon drum and the separator that comes with this, the Cyclone, the company claims that this will separate over 99% of fine wood dust. And that's really the big deal, right? Fine wood dust, again, is what we're really worried about. That's what gets in our lungs. That's what causes all the problems. Now, something else that was hugely important to me, I work out of my garage. It's attached to my house. So the level of noise was a big deal. This runs at about 74 decibels, especially when you get this extra canister with it uh, that is extra noise canceling and having a little bit of a quieter dust collector was a huge priority for me personally. Now, if you're wondering, this starts out with a seven inch inlet and it boasts over a thousand CFM. There's not a single tool in my shop that runs more than let's say 600 or so CFM requirement at the tool. And if you're choosing a dust collector, that is a big thing to look at. I get asked that question a frequent amount. 
If you look in the manual for all your tools, it will give you a recommended CFM need at the tool. Most of us, including myself prior to getting this dust collector, are probably underpowered when it comes to CFM. And again, a lot of the dust collectors that you see out on the market will boast a high CFM, but the CFM will often be measured here versus being measured at the tool. Now the ratings for this one, it's over 2000 CFM when you measure it at the fan inlet, but by the time you get to the tool, it's shown it's less than that, right? So between piping and anything else that may influence the actual CFM, it does decrease. So that's something that's really important to think about. Now, as I mentioned, when I purchased this, I opted for the 55 gallon drum. I added on a little roll cart to it. That helps me get everything in and out of the shop a lot easier. And standard included not something I had to buy extra. It came with this, the dust sentry. This thing is a great feature. It is a little electronic sensor that is on the top of the dust collector drum. And when you set it up, you basically set it to how deep you want it to alert you that your drum is starting to get full. And when that happens, the light starts blinking like this. Now in terms of installation, this really wasn't that bad. It took me probably two or three hours total to put everything together and get it mounted. The hardest thing was getting the motor up to the top. That was pretty heavy. If you have multiple people, I'd highly recommend you get multiple people. I am a meathead, so I did it all by myself and climbed up a ladder with the big heavy motor. I just pretended I was back in Strongman doing that kind of stuff again. But really, installation was not difficult. The instructions are fantastic, and it was super easy to put together. So once I had picked out the dust collector that I wanted, the next thing, of course, is to pick out the piping. Now you've got three main different options. You've got normal snap-on piping. This is the lowest level. You've got spiral piping, which is a little bit more expensive, kind of the mid option. And then you've got locking piping systems such as NordFab. That is the most expensive. Now, one of the great things that I found out about Oneida is they actually provide a service where they will help you design the piping and then even sell the piping directly to you. The pipe design itself has a fee that was associated with it. I wanna say it was a couple hundred bucks, but if you wind up purchasing your dust collector through them and using them to buy your piping, that fee is waived, so that money that you would initially pay for the design service is not ultimately charged to you. Now, they'll do this design service even if you're not necessarily buying from them, I think. You'd have to call and double check, but having a professional design this is a big deal, and I can't stress this enough. There are so many things that go into making a dust collection system work at its best. For instance, we've mentioned a couple times a 90 degree elbow. You do not want a straight 90 degree elbow coming off of something. What you ultimately want is a gradual 90 if you have to do it. We also have issues like in this shop when we started talking about the distance that I had to make the initial run. You want the longest straight run coming out of the dust collector that you can. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to have a super long one. So having a professional who could help me model something that was gonna provide ideal efficiency in my setting was well worth the money. Now, after going through the entire plan with the dust collection design professionals at Oneida, I ultimately decided to go with the SnapLock HVAC piping. And the reason for that is mainly cost savings. In terms of performance, I was told it's not really gonna make a difference. The spiral piping is maybe a little bit stiffer, but this SnapLock that they sell, again, has a gauge that is stiff enough to perform really well. And ultimately, the lock together piping or the NordFab type piping was gonna be three times the cost that I spent on this entire ducting setup. And I couldn't justify spending more on the ductwork than I did on the dust collector. So the dust collector, when I bought it, everything all told together, that would have been a huge expense and one that for me, I just didn't see needing. Now, if you're somebody who has the money to throw into that and it's something you wanna do, it seems like it's really easy to put together. It's certainly a little bit more versatile if you don't know what your final shop setup is gonna be. But for me, my shop is pretty much set up how I want it and I don't foresee big changes in the layout. So I knew that this was gonna be a set it and forget it once sort of thing. And the money savings was just too big to go with anything more expensive than that. Now, I know a lot of folks will go out and they will get PVC or they'll just go to their local home center and buy ducting equipment like snap together ducting equipment there. The problem is obviously there's all sorts of concerns with PVC about grounding and there's ways you can get around that. Plenty of people do that, have no problem with it. If you buy cheaper or just kind of home center grade metal ducting, 
that oftentimes is too thin. And if you buy a big dust collector like this that has a lot of pressure, it can actually cause those pipes to collapse. The metal ducting that they sell through Oneida is a thicker gauge, and it is a gauge that is appropriate for the amount of pressure that's gonna be running through this system. So let's show you the ducting, and we'll talk a little bit about design ideas for that. So you can see here that I've got a seven inch inlet to the actual dust collection system, and that is seven inch pipe that runs straight out. Now again, I was physically limited, so I needed to make a turn. Talking with the professionals that designed this, they got a complete layout of my shop and were able to design this to be the best efficient system possible. So we have a gradual 90 coming up, another gradual 90 that comes in to this pipe. Now, as we go down this length of pipe, I knew that I wanted to have a Y here that would break off and would supply a couple of things. Number one, I'm supplying to the drum sander, which as we noted before, has two ports on it that you really want to have two individual sources of dust collection for. You don't want those coming just into one dust collector source. So what we did is as we came off the Y, we did another gradual 90 that came down and shrunk down to this Y, which has my blast gates. Now, one of these blast gates is dedicated to the drum sander. This drum sander gets pulled out right into this space here. So that is always there. When I pull it out, that's attached. This also offered me this Rockler Dustrite extendable hose connection system. Now I keep this here for a couple reasons. Number one, when I run the drum sander, that gets attached to the drum sander and it works for that. Number two, as I turn around here, this is where I have my bandsaw. I've got my router table off to the right. So a couple of tools that I don't always use and don't have constantly plugged in, these are able to be connected with that dust right connector system. Now, last but not least, I've got some cleaning stuff. So I've got this dust right vacuum. There's a little head attachment up there for cleaning the tops of surfaces. And again, I've got that set up. So the dust right hose itself is right here. I can disconnect that and it's 25 feet of hose. I have a 22, you know, 22 foot wide garage. So I can take that hose and I can move it anywhere in the shop to vacuum, to clean and to do whatever, which as you can tell, been doing some routing recently and I need to do that. So there's another gradual 90 as we head out from that first bump off for the drum sander and the Rockler Dustrite hose system. And the first big drop after that is a drop down to my joiner and my planer. These are both five inch. And again, at all points, the hose is as big as it can be leading up to it. Once we leave that, we head over and the next drop is for my table saw. Now, one of the great things about working with the folks from Oneida is they talked to me about any future plans for the shop. And I did say that I was thinking about getting something for over the saw dust collection. So they recommended that I have this Y here. This is a five inch Y that the five inch goes down to the table saw. And then this is a four inch. So I've got four inch hose that comes off. I have it connected to here. When I get a saw stop in the future, that'll be connected to the saw stop over arm dust collection. Now, last but not least, as we run past the table saw, we have the pipe that comes down here in between my cabinets and I have another Y there. That is connected to my Shapoko. Now, this is not the original Shapoko attachment. This is from a company called Kent CNC, which I was able to find online and has been a great resource. And then again, talking about future plans, they said, well, why don't you leave this open? That way, if you need to, I was thinking at some point in the future, I may put something over here in the corner. I may have a need for dedicated hard in dust collection over there. So I've got an open space that in the future, I can upgrade if I need to. Now, same deal with installation of the dust collection. I did this all by myself. If you had to pick, if you have a friend that's only willing to give you one favor, I would ask them to help with the dust collection over the installation of the dust collector itself. The dust collection was relatively difficult to put together by myself, mostly because I was trying to put, you know, six, eight, 10 foot sections of ducting up by myself. There was nothing wrong with the material, nothing wrong with the instructions. It's just, it's really a job that's meant for more than one person. Um, it took me a few nights working out here, probably hour wise, I would guess somewhere in the four to six hour range of getting everything put together, using all of the duct tape to get everything sealed so that I was not losing any suction anywhere. But ultimately I was able to do it myself and it wasn't that big a deal. It just would have gone a lot smoother with another person. Now at each tool, we have 
blast gates. And again, these were all supplied. Everything that you guys see with the exception of this dust right hose, which I had bought separately, all of this clear hosing, all the blast gates, all the hardware, everything was supplied by Oneida when you purchased the ducting. These blast gates were relatively easy to put on. As you can see, you put a bead of silicone above and below to make sure that you got everything nicely sealed. And these things are manual, so you have to turn this screw, open it up when you don't want to use it, close it, squeeze the screw, that seals everything back up. Now I've got two options for starting. I can either use this wall-mounted starter, which again has a simple start-stop, or it does come directly supplied with a remote control. I keep this either on my belt or at the table saw where I use it the most. So let's talk about the pros, the cons, and what it's been like working with this dust collector over the last year. And would I recommend this to you guys? So obviously to a lot of people, I think this looks like overkill, but again, I think it's a big investment in your health. And I think a lot of us in the garage shop kind of community, we think so much about the tools and we don't often think about the fact that we're working in a small confined space and that long-term exposure to fine dust particles is a huge deal. The other thing that we don't think about, again, as I've mentioned a couple times now, is what kind of CFM you actually need at each individual tool. And if you look at your tool manuals, you can see what you need for each one of those. So in terms of the pros for this, this has been a fantastic machine. Having piped in dust collection and having this here for me has been absolutely huge. Another nice thing that I was able to add aftermarket was this, which is a sensor that tells me how my filter is performing. Now, one of the things that I didn't know because it's on me, I didn't read the manual, not a surprise, um, is that you really should be trying to clean this out at least after every major operation, or I'm thinking at least like, you know, once a week. I didn't do it at all for like the first six to eight months, and I finally cleaned this thing out and it started operating a lot better. But having that as a gauge to be able to tell me like, hey, your performance is starting to stink a little bit, you need to clean your filter out, that's been something that's really nice to have. Another pro, like I mentioned, the dust sentry, that thing is awesome. Now I have heard some people who have a little bit of trouble with it and can't quite get it to work right. I've never had any trouble with mine. Now in terms of performance, this has been nothing short of exceeding my expectations. Um, with every single machine in the shop, as soon as I connected the dust collector to it and opened that gate for the first time, I had a big suction and a whole bunch of old dust got sucked out of it. The table saw was the most fun. I had like a seven layer dip of dust and shavings in that table saw. Again, table saw is not great dust collection in general, but the power of it, as soon as I turned it on, immediately just cleaned out all of these machines. So it has done everything that I have asked of it. Using the joiner and the planer now is such a treat, not having dust flying all over the place. It has really been fantastic. Now, the most important pro I think overall that I've had with the Oneida folks is customer service. Now I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it, but a few months after I got this, the motor started acting a little funny. It was one of those fluke things. It was just had an issue and they jumped right on it. Within a few days of calling them about it, I had the parts that I needed to fix it. I fixed it up and it has worked ever since. And to me, that's the ultimate sign of what a good company is, is anybody can sell a product for thousands of dollars but do they have the customer service to back it up? Do they care about their customers? Will they talk to you whether you're a big company or someone who's just running a garage shop? And I was really surprised at the turnaround time and the response that I got as somebody who, again, is just kind of a hobbyist person just by themselves working out of their garage shop. It got turned around like I was a professional shop and I really appreciated that. Now, in terms of cons, I don't really have a lot of cons for you. This thing has been great and I've been super happy with it. In terms of noise, it's a pretty quiet dust collector. When my wife comes out when it's running, we can talk if we need to. Now, if we're gonna have a long conversation, obviously I'm gonna turn it off. I have this attached to a wall that is directly attached to my house and a lot of people I have heard before worry about drone or the idea that low frequency sounds are gonna transmit through your studs and get up into the house. We've not noticed that to be a problem. My kitchen is right on the other side of this wall. And my wife has said that in times when I've been in here, she's been in there. She and the kids have not noticed it. My son's bedroom is right up about there somewhere. I've run this thing late at night. You can hear a small amount of drone up there, but it's certainly not anything major. So the sound, the sound dampening 
works really well and it's definitely quiet as advertised. So ultimately, if you are in the market for a dust collector upgrade, I would highly recommend that you check out Oneida. I love the V system. If you don't have a shop set up like mine, they have a ton of different dust collector options all the way from something small and portable for somebody who's got smaller tools, all the way up to the professional shop that truly needs industrial dust collection. On top of that, the customer service has been excellent. The product has performed exactly as advertised and the people at Oneida have been really great to work with. Now I'm interested to hear from you guys in the Garage Dwellers Woodworking community. What kind of dust collection do you have in your garage or small shop? Do you have a portable unit? Do you have something big like this? What companies do you have? Let me know down in the comments below along with any questions or comments that you may have. If you like this video, you got something out of it, then please subscribe to the channel. We have a bunch more great woodworking videos coming down the pipe here. And until next time, get out there and enjoy your garage.